Aircraft carriers are the largest, strongest, most impregnable ships afloat. Designed to withstand attack by air, ship, and even submarine torpedo. Docked at Corpus Christi, Texas, the decommissioned USS Oriskany is the first such vessel chosen for the US Navy's artificial reef program. A crack team of marine demolition experts will attempt to deliberately sink this giant ship okay? to form a man-made artificial reef, attracting divers and tourism. But sinking one of the largest and most complex warships in the world will test the skills of this team to breaking point. When this ship was constructed decades ago, there were thousands of engineers and shipbuilders who gave their best efforts to ensure that this ship would never sink. This is not a trivial task, and it will require almost as much effort as it took to build the vessel to finally sink the vessel. The plan is to scuttle the Oriskany in 65 meters of water to form an outcropping for sponges and coral to colonize. This attracts recreational fishermen, a major boost to the local economy. But to make it an ideal site for shallow swimming divers, her highest point, the command tower, should be near the surface. That means the ship must settle upright. If she doesn't, the project will be a failure. It's January 2004. The first stage of the project is to identify toxic materials for removal from the Oriskany, so she won't poison the ocean environment. But after 30 years in storage, the Oriskany is in a decrepit state. She's full of lead-based paints, oil, aviation fuel, and asbestos. This will mean thousands of hours of scraping, torching, and pressure washing. And they haven't even inspected all the rooms yet. I've been crawling the ship hard for three months, about 10 hours a day, and uh, just due to the sheer magnitude of the ship, um, I still come across every now and then a room that I've not ever seen before. At 278 meters long and 45 meters wide, she displaces 32,500 tons. She's a huge and incredibly complex vessel, a floating city, filled with every service that 2,600 crew members need to live and fight at sea for months at a time. She has four kitchens, sleeping quarters, hospitals, machine shops, and radar installations. Everything from dental offices and barber shops to shoe repairers and cinemas. The Navy's head man on site is project manager Don Herring. He's got the mammoth task of ensuring every single part of the ship is inspected and cleaned. To meet strict environmental standards, he has to literally crawl through thousands of rooms and 565 tanks looking for toxic waste. Some areas are as large as an aircraft hangar, others as small as a coffin. And every single one must be made spotless. But that's just half of this mammoth project. They must also work out their sink plan to safely get the ship onto the bottom of the sea, exactly in the right place and standing upright. I think the contractor put a good sink plan together. It's going to flood basically without any mechanical means. And they decide how much water she can ballast, how much uh, displacement she can take on, how the water has to move, where it has to move, and when it has to move. Uh, quite involved. Involved is an understatement. Aircraft carriers are built to be unsinkable. Since World War II, no US Navy carriers have been sunk by enemy action. That's because they have four-inch armor plates surrounding an inner core of over a thousand rooms, each one capable of being shut off to prevent further flooding. To sink the Oriskany, each of these thousands of watertight spaces have to be breached. And even in her present state, the mighty O will put up a brave fight.
the USS Oriskany is being prepared to be sunk to become the largest artificial reef in the world. The project is now in full flow. Anything that can be salvaged is being removed. It's a tough job. This is the uh, starboard elevator. The planes are taken up this way. But it's now a hazard. Anything over the water like this is dangerous. And safety, you can't, this whole elevator is not worth anything if one man gets hurt. That's not worth it. So we take our time and do it correctly. It's interesting the Navy built this ship to be unsinkable. So it's going to take a great job engineering to have it sink properly. The construction of the USS Oriskany began in May 1944. She was supposed to become the most modern ship fighting the war in the Pacific. But before the Oriskany could fire a shot in anger, the war was over. USS Oriskany, 27,000 ton Essex class aircraft carrier, awaits launching at the New York Navy Yard. She is the first United States capital ship completed since war's end. At that time, she was only able to launch and land propeller driven aircraft. And her role in the peacetime fleet was uncertain. She was later refitted to launch jet fighters with more powerful hydraulics, steering system, bridge and flight deck and became a strategic player in the wars of Korea and Vietnam. Right through to the 1970s, the Oriskany, or Mighty O, was one of the busiest ships in the US fleet. The Oriskany's journey from warship to reef began in September 1976 when she was decommissioned. In 1989, she was finally struck off the naval registry and then joined the large number of US warships left to rot in storage. After two failed attempts to sell this monstrous vessel for scrap, the Navy chose her for an artificial reef program. This is the first time an aircraft carrier has been sunk to form an artificial reef. It's a daunting project. Everything about this ship is vast, even the mooring lines that secure her to the dock. On the end, gigantic anchors weighing in at a whopping 15,000 kilograms each. It's a nice little anchor, and this is only the flukes. So the anchor goes down probably another five feet. So it's pretty big. Now I gotta try and get out of here. Definitely was easier going down. Frank Lecky is an expert on ship demolition, but he's never dealt with anything this big. And to make life more difficult, he's trying to complete the work before the June hurricane season blows in. There's so much to do in so short a time. Every aspect of this job is a huge challenge, even down to the lead-based paint. All of it must be removed, and there's a lot more than they expected. We were tasked with 29 tons. Halfway through, we got 29 tons, and we were only halfway finished. We ended up saying, OK, we'll just fill up 24 dumpsters. We ended up filling 50 dumpsters. It's not just lead-based paint that's poisonous to the marine environment. Any liquid hydrocarbons, like oil, must also be removed. The worst of this kind of waste is in the vast engine rooms and hundreds of storage tanks but they're not easy to get to. We developed what we call mine shafts that go all the way down to the main engine room, but we had to cut through two inch armor plating, class A armor plating here. And then on level four, just before the engine room down here, if you can look all the way down, we had to cut through armor plating again. The only thing that can remove this decades old grime is a very high pressure water gun. Peeling away the filth with over 8,500 pounds of force is a dangerous job. It's all about stance. You gotta stand right. You don't stand right, you'll slip, you'll fall, crack your skull open. It's pretty dangerous down there. Some of the storage tanks they have to clean are only accessible by narrow ladders descending 18 meters straight down. Not only are they operating in tight spaces, 
they have to contend with extreme heat. At a scorching 43 degrees Celsius, everything is difficult. What you can notice where you enter the tank is it's not only extremely hot, there's no airflow whatsoever. Okay. It's uh, somewhat oily, and it's approximately uh, oh, 50, 60 feet deep, and one has to go down a, a real narrow ladder to get there. So it's all in all an extremely strenuous job uh, that requires frequent rotation of people because of the arduous conditions. But there is a reward for all this risk. The metals that the ship was made from are now being mined to pay for the operation. These are very high-grade metals. The Navy only used the best metals when they made a ship. So there's a lot of revenue coming back out of the, each of these loads. And we ship two to three loads of this a week. But the main reason for metal recovery is several. Fourth, one is the income, and the other is that putting the metals back into brass, copper, and aluminum back into the economy, it saves energy and resources. Every time you make a new ton of copper, it takes tremendous natural resources. And to have it sit in the bottom of the ocean is not helping the reef. This is our gold mine. This is where we mine our gold. This is where we're pulling out. Gold. Copper gold. While the inside of the vessel is stripped and cleaned, outside, Navy divers are inspecting the hull. They're checking the condition of patches called blanking plates that have been welded to the underside of the ship. This will give them extra information to help strategically place the bombs that will sink the Oriskany. So our job here is to identify uh, dimensions and conditions of all the blanking plates on the openings to the sea of the Oriskany. There are 124 on the drawing, and we have to go down and identify the condition of each one to make sure the next crew knows what they need to do. When you're working underneath the ship, you can identify the patches and the patch numbers and correct the drawings. The drawings then on the inside of the ship will identify which pipes go into that patch. So when you want to uh, sink the ship and sink it level and sink it even, you have to calculate how much water is going to come through each pipe. And if that's not done right, the ship will not sink correctly and it'll probably lay on its side or something strange like that. They want to sit it down on the bottom, sitting vertically up, just like you see it sitting here pier side, except it'll be underwater. Did you see patch 111 yet? No, we have not seen any patches yet. Boat divers are a little bit too far out. We need to swim forward to the ship. The divers are working in near zero visibility. This makes the job not only difficult, but dangerous. Really the worst thing that can happen is uh, either a diver to lose his air or lose his mask and then panic and come to the surface. If you do that and you hold your breath, the compressed air in your lungs explodes basically out of your lungs. 